We are honoured to welcome the Chief Rabbi, who will now address the Kehillah. Rabbi Lawrence, Dayanim, Rabbanim Nichbadim, the Home Secretary, the Right Honourable Theresa May, His Excellency the Israeli Ambassador Daniel Taub, President of the Board of Deputies, President of the United Synagogue, Members of Parliament, Heads of Communal Organisations, Heads of Finchley Synagogue, Sunat Akiva, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. La kol isman, ve'et lechol chefetz, tachat hashamayim. For everything there is a season, a time for every pursuit under the heavens. Eight livkot, the eight liskok. A time to cry and a time to laugh. Eight svod, the eight lirkot. A time for eulogizing and a time for dancing. At this very moment, we are at that middle point of a 48-hour period of time through which the crying and the eulogizing of Yom Hazikaron make way for the laughter and the dancing of Yom Ha'atzma'ut. This week, we are experiencing a further dimension of that contrast between sadness and happiness. I know that many of you were present on Sunday when, as a united community, we gathered in our thousands in unprecedented fashion to remember the six million victims of the Holocaust on Yom HaShoah. And tonight and tomorrow, again in our thousands, here in this synagogue, in many other synagogues and communal places, we are gathering with much joy to celebrate the 67th anniversary of Medinat Yisrael. <laughs> On this particular Yom Ma'ut, for me personally, I have an added dimension of a contrast between sadness and happiness. Yesterday I was in Alon Shvut Gush Etzion in Israel for the Levaya of my teacher and rabbi, Rav Aaron Lichtenstein, Zechut Tzadik Livracha. As I surveyed the scene, as thousands of us were following his remains en route to Haram Anuchot in Yerushalayim, there in the yeshiva grounds, I recalled the time when I studied in that yeshiva amongst the first Talmudim and how on one day I was amongst those who moved our standards and our chairs from the makeshift Beit Midrash at the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill, to the new, iconic, well-known Beit Midrash of Gush. And here we were following the remains of a man who, together with Rav Amital, Zechot Tzadik Livrachat, had literally created something out of nothing. A settlement that we are proud of. A Makom Torah, a great, world-renowned Torah center, from which so many people, myself included, have had our lives enhanced. This, for me, is a symbol of what has been achieved during the past 67 years in Medinat Yisrael. Another memory comes to mind. 35 years ago, a member of our extended family, Moshe Moshkovitz, popularly known as Moshko, wanted to take our family on a, a little trip so that he could show us a project that he had in mind. He was a survivor of the attack on Kfar Etzion in the 1948 War of Independence, and thereafter he was determined to rebuild Gush Etzion. And so we were in his car, and we were traveling through valleys and hills in the area between Beit Lechem and Hebron, and while on an ancient biblical pathway the car stopped. He motioned to us to get out. We followed him up to the top of a hill. And looking around, he pointed out that this was one of seven hills altogether. And I will never forget 
the prophetic energy in his eyes as he declared to us, over here there will be one of Israel's great cities. And each one of these hills which will comprise the city will be named after one of the seven fruits of the Holy Land. And today in that very place lies the city of Ephrat. This evening, I would like to address my words to the Chavirim of Tuat B'nei Akiva, because it's thanks to you that we're having this service this evening. It's thanks to you that we're going to enjoy a remarkable Ruach here tonight. It's thanks to you and members of Tnuat B'nei Akiva right throughout the world that Am Yisrael benefits from the incredible input and inspiration that the Tnuah has for us all. And I have two messages. The first is, let us celebrate with much passion and enthusiasm Yom HaAtzma'ut this year. You know, when it comes to Simcha, the term that the Torah uses is V'samachta b'chagecha v'hayita achsameach with regard to our festivals, we must rejoice with Simcha. Simcha means an inner feeling of fulfillment that is associated with success and achievement. As opposed to Sasson, which is elation, Simcha can be experienced at any time, regardless of what we are going through. And that's why Reb Nachman of Bratzlav said, Mitzvah Gedola Liot Besimcha Tamiv, it is a great precept always to have Simcha. Even if you're enduring a tragedy, even if you're going through difficult times, you can always have Simcha when you reflect on what has been achieved. And therefore tonight we can fulfill the Samachta Bechagech on Yom Atzma'ut when we indeed reflect on what has been achieved during these past 67 years. What all the Moshkos have done through creating Yesh Me'ain, a veritable, remarkable state filled with wonderful cities, towns and villages. The Simcha that is associated with the successes of Rav Aaron Lichtenstein and people like him, who within Medinat Yisrael have established the center of Torah study within our world today and are inspiring people throughout the world to follow through a true, authentic Jewish way of life. The Simcha that is associated with Israel's remarkable democratic oasis in the midst of primitive barbarism. The Simcha that is associated with the accomplishments mentioned earlier by His Excellency, the Israeli ambassador, literally just scratching the surface of the remarkable attainments that Israel has for the entire world as a leader, as a great startup nation. The Simcha that is associated with the haven that Israel provides for Jewish people around the world. And we have enormous pride in everything that Medinat Yisrael does. My second message is, please don't take Israel for granted. You don't remember a time when in Israel one had to stand in long queues in a post office in order to buy an Egeret, an aerogram, so that you can write a letter home to your parents, which would take one to two weeks to reach them. You don't remember what it was like having to stock up on a simonim. I'm sure the term doesn't even mean anything to you. So that you could make brief phone calls. You don't know what it's like having to travel from major city to major city on old roads, as a result of which the journeys would take such a long, difficult time. You don't know what it's like to live through Israel's long, hot summers without any air conditioning or to be in the freezing cold Jerusalem winters without any heating. But more significantly than that, you don't know what it's like to have a world without the state of Israel. Here in our gathering this evening, there are some of us who do recall a world without an Israel, a world in which there was no country there to stand up for oppressed and persecuted Jews, a world within which there was no country ready to fully, uncompromisingly open its arms to provide a safe haven for millions of Jews who were just about to be murdered. In Britain, we have been continuously blessed 
with successive governments who have rejoiced in Israel's successes, who have been proud of Israel's attainments, and who have certainly not take is taken Israel for granted. And this is certainly the case with our current government. Tonight we are honoured to welcome the Right Honourable Theresa May, our Home Secretary. And we would like you, Home Secretary, please to convey to the government the appreciation of our community for the extent to which, during the past summer, our government stood by Israel, was fair-minded and even-handed and responsible in everything that it said and it did. Home Secretary, we would also like to thank you for your support of the State of Israel and to thank you for your ongoing support for our community. In your hands, we have had a Home Secretary who has recognised that anti-Semitism is not merely a threat against the Jewish community, it is a threat against all of our society. And under your leadership, the fight against anti-Semitism has not left to be in the, been left to be in the hands of the Jewish community alone, but has been a fight which has been fought from the government down. We hugely appreciate the measures that you have undertaken, the support that you have given, and all the wonderful statements that you have made, and we're now very much looking forward to your address to us this evening. Chavirim of Tznuat B'nei Akiva. Please, rejoice this Yom Ma'ut every year on Yom Atzmaut and every day of every year for the achievements of what has been attained within Medinat Yisrael. And I know that you will do that. And I know that in your hands we have a bright future for our people here and right throughout the world. And I know as well that you will never take Israel for granted. For everything there is a time and a season for all pursuits under the heavens. May the Almighty bless us on this Yom Ma'ut, that a time for crying and a time for eulogizing, a time for sadness and a time for mourning will be behind us. And may he bless all of Am Yisrael, that ahead of us will lie a time of laughter, of happiness, dancing, and rejoicing always, the Chini Ratzon Amen. Amen.